get on the track and ever living in yeah. life, yo. It's live. got to get to get to be. Let's get into it before it's all over. I ain't playing, I heard it might be. I'm not clean cut, I wanna get slightly over. Your rhymes are whack, you need to do them over. When I attack, yeah. say bye, your life is over. Coming from the under, it's time to get over. You can ride me, boo, and then let me turn you over. These petty MCs, I step on the wall over. Turn my mic up loud so you can't talk over. Babylon system, my people fight over. And over again, why it just can't be Now let's get ready for the lightweight fight Between Michael Katsidis and Saar Amansat you see that Amon Sat is yet another of those precocious young fighters coming out of the Philippines at age only 21. Amon Sat has already had 21 professional fights. Katsidis at 26 is an unbeaten knockout machine coming in with 13 consecutive knockouts. There's a five-year age advantage for the Filipino fighter, a half-inch height advantage for Katsidis. Arm length measured from the armpit to the end of the fist, even for both. Uh, they weighed in at 135 for Katsidis, and Amon Sat was two pounds under the limit after having trained apparently well at the wild card gym in Hollywood under the watchful eye of Freddie Roach. And tonight, Katsidis is up to 144 and a half, and Amon Sat has rehydrated all the way up to 146 and a half unofficially. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Michael Katsidis saw Raman Stud fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. So here's another Manny Pacquiao protege out of the Philippines. Uh, we told you about Ray Boom Boom Batista, who uh, is fighting on an upcoming HBO card and already making a name for himself, 122-pound weight class. Amon Sat at 135 has shown some potential early on. Two losses, both of them to the same fighter, and some outside-the-ring behaviors, which seemed for a little while to threaten his career. A little bit of a party animal, according to his reputation, Emmanuel, and that doesn't always uh, conflict with the notion of being a terrific fighter. No, and in fact, his fellow countryman, Manny Pacquiao, has been known for that before he got to be where he is today. I mean, and Pacquiao is like a legend in the Philippines with his bar escapades and his pool hall adventures. Pool hall expertise, yes, exactly. <laughs> and uh, Amon Saad, incidentally, said that he likes coming to America where there are fewer distractions. That was interesting. Um, and he also likes, of course, the fact that he can get his hair bleached in, uh, in hair salons here in the USA. Well, he doesn't have his earrings in his hair that he had earlier today, so he, he's getting to look a little bit more like a fighter tonight. The typical Filipino style is violent. Most of the fighters we've seen coming out of the Philippines in the past few years are punchers by nature. Uh, Amon Sat, different from Pacquiao, and uh, and also, I think, different from Batista, has no background whatsoever in kickboxing. All of his fighting has come in boxing discipline. Bad to the bone is the music, Emmanuel. So he understood what our commentary would be about him <laughs> as he came to the ring and has supported it with the soundtrack. Now there's Michael Katsidis, and the tattoo, the tattoo is his Achilles warrior tattoo. Uh, his family hails from the town in Greece, which originally produced Achilles. And uh, Katsidis, who is a bit of a showman, enters the ring wearing that Spartan warrior sun tattoo. College student with a major in gaming. He's a very interesting character. You know, and also like all of the Australian guys, they're extremely tough, tough people. I mean, you know, the Filipinos are tough, but I think the Australians to some degree are even tougher. His second professional fight, he fought a 12-rounder. 12-rounder in his second professional yes. fight. 
I don't know that we've ever seen that on anybody's record before. He has a brother. And went to 12 a, rounds. It wasn't just scheduled. Yeah, exactly. Went the distance. He has a brother who's a jockey in Australia. And, uh, you know, we all know that racehorse jockeying is a difficult trade by any standard. But he says it's even more rough hewn and difficult in Australia than, uh, than up here. Although his brother is allowed to rise up and weight all the way to 120 pounds. Doesn't have to stay around 114, which is the plight of American jockeys. Casitas is unbeaten. Comes in with 13 straight KOs. His holy grail in the lightweight division for the moment would be a fight against the baby bull, Juan Diaz of Houston, Texas. And what a show that might be if it ever were to take place. That's one fight I would love to see. Even if I'm not working as a broadcast, I would be watching that fight on TV somewhere. Two offensively aggressive fighters. As is the case here. And now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay, we go to the second bout of the evening on HBO Pay-Per-View. Brought to you by Golden Boy Promotions. Once again, sponsored by Rockstar. Party like a rock star. Cerveza Tecate, beer with an attitude. And Southwest Airlines, symbol of freedom. This contest is brought to you in association with Northeast Promotions. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point system assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Ruben Garcia, Patricia Morse Jarman, and C.J. Ross. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Jay Nady. And now, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Interim Lightweight title. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing black, official weight, 133 pounds. His professional record, 18 victories, including 10 knockouts with two defeats and one bout even. From Tag, Bilaran City, Bohol, Philippines, he is Zor Amonsa. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black with gold, official weight, 135 pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 22 bouts, 22 victories, including 20 knockouts. From Toowoomba, Queensland, Australia, the undefeated WBO interim champion, the great Cat City. Do we have any questions? Obey my commands. Good luck. Let's touch gloves and go to work. Both fighters are extremely sturdily constructed for the weight class. And uh, when you get a look at their full frames, you'll see that both of them, Amansat in particular, has puncher's legs. Very strong legs, thick calf muscles, uh, the kind of basis of support that leads to big punching. In fact, all of the Filipino guys have large calves. Uh, it's a standard tradition, it seems like. I guess maybe because of their background, most of them in kickboxing. Although Amon Sat doesn't have that background. He's yeah. a southpaw, as you see. And uh, incidentally, of course, Manny Pacquiao is a southpaw. But in Amonsat's case, he's a natural right-hander, and his best punch is his right hook. Remember, Pacquiao had to develop his right hook for a long time. He was uh, very dependent on that great straight left hand. Katsidis has already been in one Fight of the Year candidate this year, and you see Katsidis going to work, punching hard with a straight right hand up the middle against Amonsat's southpaw stance. But earlier this year, Katsidis fought against Robin Earl of Great Britain, a fight in England in which, in five rounds, he threw more than 400 punches and landed more than half of them. You can see right away, Katsidis likes to get right close to you, where you can't have any time to even pick his punches out of the He gets where he shoots his punches out, he's about 12 inches away. Talk about a puncher's mentality. Every punch Katsidis throws is intended to knock you out. Now, Amansat starts leading with his straight left, to uh, counter the fact that Katsidis is unloading the straight right hand 
up the middle of his stance against him. There's another bomb from Katsidis. Momentarily drives Amonsad back. See, Katsidis like to punch you and push you with his left shoulder. He smothers you and punches you at the same time that he smothers you. Well, the question here is who can take a shot? Well, I tell you what, the little short right hand that Casitas is trying to land is going to be very effective, in particular as the fight goes on and he can get closer and closer. Exciting start to what could be a terrific fight between Tsar Amatsat in the black trunks with the bleached hair and Michael Katsidis. As long as Amasak can keep him at a distance after, I think he, he could be effective because he jabs good with the right jab, and he has a nice little short right hook that he delivers. But the only time that Casitas is effective is when he gets very close and starts smothering him. Again, Amansad fighting southpaw is a natural right-hander. His best punches are with the front hand, that hook and the jab, as Emmanuel Stewart was describing to you. You know, until he got knocked out by Kelly Pavlik, there was a lot of excitement about the body of Edison Miranda in the middleweight division. His back opens up like a fan. These guys are both built like Edison Miranda. Very, very well built guys for small guys. And, and, and probably can't see his legs may not be that small. If they're just those type of socks that is where it makes your legs look small. No, I think he's got very strong legs as well. Although Amon socks are most notable. Yeah, both guys are physically strong and I think mentally strong too. Hard right hand by Katsidis, and Amon Sat, who's been hurt by that punch several times in this round, waves Katsidis in as if to say, come on, keep punching. I need my chance to counter, and oh my gosh, what a straight right hand and a left hook from Michael Katsidis. Amon Sat's impressive, but he's fighting against a tornado in there. This is a very, very, very ah! contested fight. Wow. You notice Jay Nady is mic'd up tonight. Just for us at HBO. Go in and out. Don't, don't let him get you in the corner. Keep your distance. Keep your distance. Get your hands up. Happy box numbers from round one. Sar Amansat had a terrific looking round. He landed 15 out of 45 power go, shots. Go, go. Nick Katsidis of Australia was 24 of 41. And those are bombs he's throwing. What makes this fight good, both guys have a lot of skill, but as soon as one guy has an advantage, the other guy comes storming right back trying to get the lead again. And it's going to be like that throughout the whole fight. Yeah, and you saw the way they stood and sort of posed off against each other at the end of the first round. Both of them seeming to want to make the point, hey, I'll be here for a while. Both Don't guys, get too excited. Oh, yeah, both guys seem to have a little street attitude in a way, too, which makes for a good fight. Amansad has made enough of a point with his right hook and straight left hand that now Katsidis is circling and looking for a little more space to fire his shots. An interesting momentary change for Katsidis, who either has decided to fight at a slower, more cautious pace or has gained respect for Amansad's punching power. I, I think that uh, Katsidis right now is having a lot of respect for Amansad because I don't think he's fought anybody on that level that he's fighting tonight with Amasad. On the other hand, Katsidis landed one right hand and immediately jumped forward for the chance to land two more. And also, I like Amasad is landing one punch that I love from South Falls, which is a right uppercut. And there's blood flowing from the right nostril now of Michael Katsidis. And what a right hand. Oh, my gosh. Amasad leaned into it, and Katsidis targeted him perfectly. Pin point right okay? hand, right Are on the chin okay? as he was coming in. Are you okay? Yeah. Box. Katsidis races across the ring and jumps into position to fire another right hand. I'm inside at the last second, saw it coming. This is the mentality of the pure knockout puncher. Katsidis doesn't care what's coming back at this point. And Amasad is doing the right thing, tying him up. Not exchanging punches while he's hurt. 
and Casitas decided to just throw him down. But Casitas' his left eye is closing rapidly as the result of a hard right hand by Amundsen. So the urgency grows for Katsidis, who's been looking for a knockout from the first bell, but who is now facially damaged with blood coming out of his nose and a badly swollen left eye. <laughs> Uppercuts now from Katsidis. Trying to set up another big right upstairs by firing his right hand up and under. Even though both of these guys are still for the, you, you still seem True to have the, the atmosphere of two street guys Stop. fighting that have skill. Box. Indication would seem to be that the damage to Katsidis' left eye was done by a punch and not by a butt. Both fighters landing very hard shots in the first couple of rounds, and Katsidis knocks Amonsat down in the second. Suck him up. Nice and deep. And I want some swelling on that, Jim. This is very How you interesting. It's not any one particular cut, but just so much damage around the eye area, continually, mainly, I think, from the right jab and the right hook of Amasad. So in between the big explosions, Amasad is steadily working that right jab all the time. Right hook, right uppercut. No big punch, but steady. get this boy to work away a bit, Mick, for me, okay? And I want that to defend. There's the knockdown, and what a terrific, perfectly targeted right-hand shot by Katsidis as Amonsat was basically jumping forward and leaning in, trying to continue to do damage to Katsidis' face. Power punches in round two. Amonsat, 9 out of 32, but you saw the damage that he did. Katsidis, 29 out of 48. 29 out of 48. That means in two rounds, Katsidis has landed 53 of 89 power punches. As accurate as anybody we've ever seen. But one of the things that still is very important in this fight is the consistency of Amasad. He's always in between steadily doing something. Even if it's not as explosive as Katsidis, he's doing something all the time. And as a result, Katsidis is now very pronouncedly holding both hands up in front of his face. So Katsidis is now in the position of trying to come inside, get inside to deliver big punches, but without jabbing his way in because he's holding his gloves up in front of his face to try to protect. And he's trying to protect himself now. And Amasa seems to be very relaxed, very comfortable in the situation right now. Outside for the one knockdown, he's really setting the tempo and controlling the fight. Katsidis' early assault kind of reminds you in a way of a young Mike Tyson in the sense that every punch is thrown with knockout intentions and there's such amazing intensity. But of course, Tyson, Stop. like Jack Dempsey, like a lot of great punchers, wound down like a clock after five or six rounds. And you wonder how much that's, urgency that's there is for Katsidis to get this done in a hurry. And what he reminded me somewhat of also the one holding, guy, which is another famous holding. Australian, which was Jeff Finnick, Stop. who fought. But Jeff Finnick did not have the firepower that Katsidis has. But Jeff Finnick was strong the entire fight, whether it was 12 rounds, 15, or 10. Well, Katsidis had his hands open and was throwing from both sides early in the fight. Now that he has sustained so much damage to his face, his new tactic is to come forward with both hands up and try to set up right hands upstairs with his uppercut. But the one thing I say, every punch that he throws has still got full knockout power on it, though. He's not lost his knockout power. Amon Sad is the smoother boxer, seems to have more different punches and more weaponry. That could show up over the course of a long fight. If I'm in Amonsad's corner, I'm telling my fighter to hang in and try not to lose his equilibrium because he may be able to outbox Katsidis over the long haul. Yeah, because Katsidis is really shooting his wide. He's letting every punch go strictly for knockout, not planning on a long fight. Now a series of left hooks from Katsidis. Mostly a right-hand puncher up to this point. Don't hold, don't hold. Stop! Katsidis leaning in to try to shorten yeah. the distance. Yeah, but Katsidis is very, very effective with short punches in there. Yeah, and so now Amazon start, starts trying to go to his uppercut. Katsidis' blood is going to start showing up in Amonsat's hair. Yeah. 
blistering battle along the road Five. down the stretch of round three. What a brutal fight. Champion, 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 champion. Yeah, that's good. Go in and out. Focus. Get the water. Okay. Get your uppercut in. Go in and out. Don't, don't let him corner you. Stay away from him. Keep jabbing him. Okay. Good, good. Okay. All right. Now I want you to sit. Now I want you to sit a little bit on the outside and let him come on, okay? Michael, I want you to sit on the outside, balanced up, and I want you to let him come on a little bit, okay? Then when you work, I want you to move in again, okay? Keep banging that bottle for me, and then back over the top, all right? I'll show you one, one thousand. Take a look at it. Copy box numbers in the third round. Katsidis, 25 out of 50 in power punches. He continues to land half or more of his power punches in every round. That time, Amansat, 26 out of 52. Katsidis hasn't thrown a single jab in the last two rounds. Harold, how do you have it through three? Look at you. Two rounds to one, 29, 27, Michael Katsidis. You got to give him an extra point in round two for the knockdown. Jim, I got to comment that something they're doing in the Katsidis corner is driving me nuts. This is a guy that's busted up, and yet they got Jimmy Strickland, the cut man, working on the outside of the ring, on the right-hand side, trying to close the cut or trying to bring the swelling down on Katsidis' left eye. He's reaching across, all twisted up. They should have him in front of the fighter, inside the ring. Two to one, Katsidis. What's your take about uh, Jimmy Strickland working outside the rope? Yeah, I was going to make that same coming. One of the best cut men in the boxing in the business, and to have him working outside where you cannot be effective. He needs to be looking directly into the cut where he can work comfortable, and also to maybe put something to cover the eye area in case some of the coagulants drift down into the guy's eye, but he's, he's working in a handicap position. And incidentally, it's obviously a situation where they didn't bring a cut man from Australia. They've hired Jimmy Strickland on a one-off basis because he works here in America. You wonder if they even know how good a cut man they've got working That's with them. That's a good point. They probably don't even know. But I tell you, with the way this fight is going, it looks, Hard right hand it by looks very good for Amasad right now. But he seems to be so relaxed with the situation, placing his punches very well. And it seems to be just more in control. Absolutely. He's weathered the early storm, and you saw the show of confidence from Amansad at the end of the last round as he went back to the corner with his hands held high. His corner men were rejoicing. Their take is they've turned the tide already in this brutal battle. But you still have two good punches, and what's interesting, these guys are punching with more power than most of the modern heavyweights that you see. Once again, we're in the lightweight division two young fighters, either of whom could rise to be a major league destroyer in this weight class. Amansat's only 21 years old, fighting in his 22nd professional fight. He's fighting a masterpiece. He's doing everything right. Keeping his lead right foot outside yep, of Casitas' left foot, and, and it's enabling him to hit that eye even better than he would normally be able to do it. And in addition to mixing up the jabs and the, with the right hand and the hook with the right hand, now he's doing a lot of left hand leads through the center. And Katsidis' confidence has clearly receded a little bit as he has to change his style somewhat. Stop! With his hands up more to try to protect his face, changing his punch selection a little bit, looking for more answers for how to keep doing damage to Amansat without getting damaged himself. And Amansat just getting more and more comfortable with the flow of the fight and his clearly superior boxing skill. Yeah, he's doing a variety of different things now. But as Amansat starts to get confident and open up, he creates a couple of opportunities, and Katsidis oh, immediately right jumps cut. on the opportunity to land the right hand. Amansat with a huge uppercut down the stretch of the round. Katsidis has a good chin, that's for sure. Both guys. <laughs> Three more for me, mate. Nice and deep. One. Let's clean him up, Redwood. Another one. And one more. That's good. good. Still clear? Still clear? Okay. Okay. Let's get right outside that foot, mate. Let's get the steerer up, okay, for that right hook. Outside the foot. And I want you to start moving up a little bit more with the right hand. You can start to double it up for me, okay? Here you see, starting in round two, no particular one punch, but just a variety of different punches that's coming from Amasad. And that, as a result of that, that's why you see all of the facial damage has been did. Just continually just landing punches, particularly a lot of the right hand punches. Jabs, right hooks, right uppercuts, 
Left hand leads, right jabs. Unless you need any further evidence that the tide has completely turned, in the first minute 35 of round four, by CompuBox count, Katsidis didn't throw a punch. He wound up six for 19 in the entire round. Amansak had a very smooth round, landing 15 out of 53 punches. So for the moment, it's Saar Amansak who has gained command of this fight, though he was down in the second round and rocked by a series of right hands from Michael Katsidis early on. He has damaged Katsidis' face. He has compromised Katsidis' vision out of the left eye, and he has gained tactical control of the fight. And right now, Katsidis cannot deal with the situation. He doesn't know what's going to happen, where is going to happen, when is going to happen, and he does, just totally is confused right now. Well, that's the puncher's mentality. I mean, I, I, I've seen it so many times in 20 years of calling fights, Emmanuel. Punchers, quite often, don't have plan B because they are so confident in their ability to destroy the opponent with big shots. I agree with you, Jim, and this is a perfect example right here. He's also cut fighting a good fighter, a southpaw, on top of that. The thing about Katsidis is he has fight-changing power in both fists and the toughness to hang in there and throw those punches with bad intentions in the face of adversity. That's what we've seen so far. Yeah, that's a good thing that both guys, as I said earlier, they both are punching with a lot of authority, especially for small fighters. But Katsidis can turn the fight around still with one punch because he still is punching with a lot of power. I don't believe he has the same explosiveness he had in the first two rounds. I think that he is, is tentative enough now in the face of the damage that Amazon has done that he's not setting his feet and firing with quite as much Stop! shocking power as was the case early on. Box. Jim, I honestly don't see that. I think that that there's some wear and tear there. Obviously, it's been a tough fight. There's but I think, right like, hand. right there, Casitas is throwing with everything he's got when he's throwing. Well, those two right hands certainly supported your point, Max. But up until then, you're right. He was more applied with his punches. But what he's, what he's got may not have been what he had a couple you're rounds rolling. ago. Stop! Put your head. Amon Saad is a little bit more aware now of Katsidis' extreme dependency on the right hand, too. Well, this is a good round for Katsidis. Katsidis has reestablished himself as a force in the fight in this round. After clearly being a little bit lost at sea in round four. Now Jay Nady warns Amon Saad for holding. Katsidis takes advantage of the momentary lull. He jumped right back in and land right hands over and under. Stop! Last 10 seconds of round number five. It's been an all-out war from the perspective of Michael Katsidis of Australia. See, it's Saar Amansat trying to mix in boxing with his punching. Great fight so far. 15 minutes ago, 42-year-old Bernard Hopkins. Will it be his last fight? He says, no. I'm back to enjoy what I do and continue doing it because I proved to myself last summer against Antonio Tarver that I can be comfortable in the light heavyweight division, that this is a good weight for me, and that a continuation of my career is entirely logical. Winky Wright will have something to say about that later on. Make sure you lock it down. Come back to me with it, eh? I want it down, everything down. When you hit the bottom, let's bring it back down, shift your head back down this side, OK? Yep. You can double up the right hand when you got him on the float. You are behind. You need to pick it up. A little. Well, you heard trainer Brendan Smith telling Michael Katsidis there, you are behind. You need to pick it up a little bit. Smith may be forgetting that his fighter had a two-point round in the second round when he knocked Sar Amatsat down. Or he may simply be saying, we've lost every round since then. Yeah, but whatever way, I think there's a reason to be concerned in either one of these corners. Because the fight right now should be pretty much close to dead even. Our punches in the fifth round. Katsidis 20 out of 43. Amansad 17 out of 39. Not much to choose between the two of them. You know, Katsidis is, uh, seems to have lost control of the fight, even though he had a better round last round, being outboxed. And uh, he might not win the fight. <laughs> But what I want to know is, when can I see him again? <laughs> because this guy, win or lose, is a guy you want to see fight. I mean, he's bringing pressure, and he's throwing real knockout bombs with both hands. Well, and if he ever managed to get a fight against Juan Diaz, the baby bull, uh, I mean, 
I'd pay big money to see that fight. Because Juan Diaz is as exciting as any American fighter. Fights for 180 seconds of every round. Is more polished and yet without the one-punch power. Unquestionably, nowhere near this kind of power. But definitely a more skilled boxer. <laughs> Amansat trying to get the blood flowing again from the left eye of Katsidis, and there it comes. Amansat's got a pretty good jab when he uses it, Emmanuel. Sometimes yeah, he he's, not, he's not using it enough. He's actually slowed down on his boxing part, and that's what's been the fight to be. The fight is becoming much closer than that's Stop. going on. But interesting, uh, Katsidis said that he's ready for Juan uh, Diaz right now if they if they can make the fight. And uh, so he has that much confidence. But I guess if he started off fighting 12 rounds off the bat, yeah, he, 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 12 he, rounds yeah. in your second fight, and yeah. this kind of puncher. You know, he's, he's obviously very confident in his punching power and his ability to change any fight at a given moment. But him and, and Diaz would be a good fight. But one is consistent, though. It's the one thing he fights, as you said, all the way through the whole round. He never takes a break. Juan Diaz coming off yes. a, a stirring victory over Asselino Freitas a couple of months ago and looking toward a possible fight with another belt holder in the lightweight division, Julio Diaz of Coachella, California, later on this fall. But I agree with Mad Max. I would love to see this Casitas fight again against regardless of who. He's very exciting. Two Not straight right hands from Casitas momentarily stun Amon Sot. Amon Sot comes back with a right hand of his own. Little left hook for Casitas. The fighting spirit in both of these guys is tremendous. Amon Sot, meanwhile, is also taking some big shots. Stop! and hanging in there and not really changing the game plan, having the discipline to stick with his game plan. Casitas is fighting much closer, and that's making a big difference. This is not the kind of fight you'll see in the main event. This is about as far from what you'll see in the main event as is descriptively possible. And here comes another great artist, Winky Wright who uh, has been very relaxed all weekend and seemed very calm and relaxed in the wake of the strange incident at yesterday's weigh-in where Bernard Hopkins, after having laughed and yucked it up with Winky through the entire pre-fight publicity stretch, suddenly put out his right hand and popped right Get on the jab. forehead the during the stare down at the end of the weigh-in, causing everyone who was Don't there to wonder him. exactly what was that about, what got into Bernard, and was it calculated or was it spontaneous? Yeah. Turn around when he turns the corner near you. Jab, stay away. Come on, let's go. Listen to me. Combi Box numbers found a huge round for Michael Katsidis in the sixth, landing 31 out of 56 punches overall, every single one of them a power shot, every single one thrown with knockout intentions, as you've seen from the opening bell. Harold, how do you have it through six? Look at you, four rounds to two, 58, 55, Michael Katsidis. Jim, this guy is shades of Vito Antifermo, Billy Backus. You know the kind of fighter that gets busted on and never stops coming. I mean, he's a, a brutal banger, just like Max Caliban has called him. He just keeps on coming. He doesn't care about the damn cuts. He just keeps waving in, throwing that right hand. I think he won, you know, rounds one and two, rounds five and six, four rounds to two, Katsidis. He ran past Amonsot and tripped over Amonsot's foot and got up so rapidly, he barely needed Jay Nady to rule that it wasn't a knockdown. Went right back to throwing his hard right hand. Speaking of knockdowns, when I was talking to Jay Nady, just recently, speaking about the knockdown with Barrera and Marquez, he admitted, he said, I just didn't see the punch that knocked him down. Well, he's been on record as saying that he understood exactly what happened with that, and it was one brief moment in a fight that was scored so one-sidedly for Marquez that ultimately it was a moot point in context of the scoring of the fight. Hard right hand by Katsidis. It's amazing how he seemed to have got new energy and new spirit and punching with so much authority and firepower. And he's taking control over the fight all over again. And I think Amonsat didn't expect Katsidis to be able to come back like this at this stage of the fight. Amonsat might have thought after the third and fourth rounds that he had it. You know, uh, Jeff Fennick was the best Australian fighter in recent years, in my opinion, and did not hit like Katsidis because he had bad hands, but never stopped coming at his man. Stop! And Katsidis has a, a lot of that same kind of fighting spirit. Fennick would beat more skillful fighters by breaking their spirits, breaking their will to fight. 
and Amon's side has shown a lot of heart, but if any, if there looks like there's a little give in either guy right now, let's put it this way, it's not in Katsidis. And Mike Tyson's name has come up a few times uh, during this commentary for obvious reasons, but there's another connection because the fighting styles of Tyson and Jeff Fennick were so similar that they became great friends, and Fennick even at one point left Australia and came here to train Tyson for his fight with Clifford Etienne. Yeah, he trained Tyson for two fights. In fact, I did at one time train Jeff Fennick myself, so I agree with everything that Max said about him, but the difference is the punching power of Casitas is way, way better than Jeff, because Jeff had very bad hands and fought a lot of his fights with both hands bad. Even and, going and into the fight. Jeff was in a lower fight. weight class than this. Yes. He was a, a featherweight fighter. Yeah, yeah, he was, a, he was fought around 122, 118, <laughs> and, and if, eventually 126. Casitas needs the punching power because he's not as polished a pressure fighter as Fennec was, I don't think, but has that same kind of fighting spirit. But not as consistent either. Jeff fought, was continually fighting all the way through. Every time Katsidis lands his right hand across the top, the crowd oohs and ahs. Hey, he's singing well there, that night. Breathe him in again. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Hey, mate, you're settling out there nice there. You're finding it lovely. Your timing's getting very good. Excellent. You're coming into your own there, and I'm going to let you just come into your own, okay? You're coming into it nicely. You got your thinking cap on. I want you to just come into your own. You're going well, eh? Yeah, this fight is yours. Step away, step in. Get the jab in, then step out, then hit him again. Okay? Play, fight. Copy box numbers through round seven. Katsidis, 160 out of 311, landing more than half his punches in the fight, just as he did against Robin Earl of England earlier this year. Amansat, 134 out of 438. On Harold Letterman's card, Katsidis lengthens his lead, and he comes out throwing with the same gusto in round number eight. Amansat caught him with some good uppercut counters, Emmanuel. What does he see there that he's, that he's starting to use that uppercut, at least in the beginning of the round? Well, he got a very good uh, uh, motivation speech, I would say, from his corner uh, at the end of the last round. And he should because if he gets back to jab, the jab is the key in the fight, but he's lost his jab. And as long as he had his jab working, it kept him where he kept his distance and his range. But once he lets Casita start getting in close to him where he can muscle him, he has trouble. Yeah, Amansat's fighting spirit sometimes penalizes him here because he wants to go ahead and brawl with Katsidis. And, and you can see from the strength of Amonsad's legs and his own punching power, he probably figures he can brawl with anybody in the world. But this guy is quite unreal in his strength for a 135-pound fighter, meaning Katsidis. Very, very strong guy. What's compelling is you see that when you see the triumph, of will over skill. Clearly, he's outskilled in this fight, and his uh, doesn't hurt to, to be able to punch like Katsidis, but to impose his will on a more skillful fighter just by who, being more physical is compelling. Especially the guy that's unmarked. I mean, you know, look at Amasai doesn't have a scratch on his face, and here's this guy's fighting with his eyes hurt, closed, Stop! bleeding. Both eyes are really injured. It looks like he's not going to see for a month. Stop! Amansat holding on to Katsidis' right arm. Blood flowing freely from Katsidis' left eye. Little left hook by Katsidis. There's the big shot. A straight right hand. There's the that's, jab that's that could jab. win the that's fight for Saar yeah. Amansat if he would go back to it more often. A jab and a little footwork. That's the way to do it. Well, low. You all right? warming Katsidis for a low blow. Not to mention a headbutt. <laughs> he came in with his head and, and hit him low at the same time. A lot going on in the fight. Zane Nady's done a good job of keeping it under control here. Stop! Come back, please. Box, please. See, <laughs> so that's when Amasai gets into trouble when he bends right forward just at the time that Casita starts punching, because he bends right into those little short punches that Casita shoots instead of pulling back and jabbing. 
Cita seems to be able to slide to his left now and cut off the ring a little bit better than he was doing a few rounds ago. Time! Yeah. This may have been a round for Amasad, and the difference was he jabbed more this round. Well, when you saw Winky Wright entering the arena, I made a reference to what went on in the weigh-in yesterday between Wright and Hopkins. And you could see the smiles and the laughter as the two fighters took turns stepping on the scale to weigh in, both of them at exactly 170 pounds, the weight limit for the fight. No indication here that anything unusual was about to happen. Hopkins was quite congenial in his meeting with us yesterday morning, seemingly in a good mood, warm and relaxed. Then they stood behind the scale, got ready for the face-off. The talking began, and all of a sudden, in a moment, boom. Hopkins put his hand on Winky Wright's forehead and pushed him back, and a scuffle broke out between the two camps. The two fighters were separated. No meaningful punches were landed by anybody on the dais, but uh, certainly there was danger with that many people up on the podium ready for the weigh-in ceremony. And of Hopkins' proposed $3 million purse for the fight, 10%, $300,000, is now going to be held in abeyance, uh, awaiting a hearing Monday with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, where they'll determine exactly what penalty should be levied against Bernard Hopkins for what went on yesterday. We'll talk more about that it's small a spat and its potential implications for the fight between Hopkins and Wright. Meanwhile, the violence continues here. Jabs through eight rounds. Katsidis has landed two of 13. That's right, two of 13 jabs in eight rounds. Amonsat, 42 out of 210. Blood flowing freely from both of Katsidis' eyes, and he's grinning. But he can't get into the fight. He's grinning, but right now, as long as Amonsat keeps boxing and moving, he cannot get back into his groove yet. The distance that Amasad is fighting now is perfect for Amasad. Terrible for Casitas. Stop, 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 stop. That was a headbutt. You okay? Headbutt. All right? Yeah, it's a headbutt. Time! Good luck to Nady trying to find a new cut on Katsidis' face. It's a headbutt on the top. It's a new cut on the top. It's a new cut. This wouldn't stop the fight. Okay. We're okay. Well, that's a headbutt on the top. Time in. So there is a new cut on Katsidis' face. As if he needed that. The question I have watching this unfold, when Amonsat has the distance and he's using his jab, as opposed to when Katsidis starts to close the distance and get physical, how much of that is, when Amonsat's not using the jab, is Katsidis imposing his will? In other words, when he gets really physical, is there any kind of skillful technique that Amonsat can employ to stop that kind of physicality, given how strong it seems is? Yes, but I don't know if he do it. When you do that for your jab, uh, you throw a punch when the guy's coming, you kind of move him off to the side at the same time that you punch. Henry Maskey was good at that. You hit the guy and push him off in a different direction in addition to it. And Cetus may well be ahead on the scorecards, Emmanuel, as he is on uh, Harold Letterman's scorecard. But how much urgency is there for him, in your view, to go ahead and get the knockout, given that this fight could be stopped at uh, any uh, moment? Absolutely, uh, Jim. That's why I'm very much concerned about the doctor may stop this, and especially the, the actually cuts were mostly inflicted by blows, legal blows, too, so it wouldn't be any accidental injury type where you went to scorecards. We, we saw Arturo Gatti's ostensibly his last big-time fight, and he got to be a, as popular a fighter as he was because of circumstances like this. Fights that could have been stopped with swollen eyes and cuts, and he came through with dramatic knockouts. And Zeta seems to feel as though he needs the knockout, and he's certainly still going for it with every right-hand punch. Lands another huge shot there, and a big one there. And the crowd begins to respond, but there are only 15 seconds left in the round. And a frustrated Katsidis tries to throw Amonsad into position where he can land another one. That's extraordinary urgency on the part of Katsidis. Because at what point is it the doctor's professional responsibility to protect Katsidis' vision rather than his potential victory here? This is very bad. This is what champions do right here, right now. I want you to breathe for me. Ref! Ref! Can I talk to you for a minute? What? If this gets stopped by the doctor now, it does it go to score? One, only one of those is a headbutt. That's the one on the top. That was the first. Is that one that's stopping it? No. No, there's nothing getting stopped yet. I want you just to breathe. I need some water for him, fellas. Okay. 
Breathe them in. Breathe them in. Okay, I'm going to give you a drink. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to give him a sip. Even though Casillas is cut and it looks like he may get stopped, he's still punching with so much authority, and particularly when he can get in close. And Amasad doesn't have the time or the distance to see the right hands coming in. Two great right hands right here. Bang! Power punches in nine. Katsidis 25 out of 51. Amasad 13 out of 26. The doctor gives Katsidis another round to fight. Tenth of a scheduled 12. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Look at you. 87. 83, six rounds to three, Michael Katsidis. Jim, this is a weird situation. If they stop the fight because of the cut over Michael Katsidis' eye, which was caused by a headbutt, you go to the scorecards and you score a partial round if it's stopped in the middle of the round. If they stop the cut on anything else, the cut under the right eye, the cut under the left eye, uh, Zar Abinstadt wins by a technical knockout. That's about as strange as you can get. Six to three, Katsidis. What a chin Amansat has shown, taking shot after shot after shot from Katsidis. What a powerful desire to finish it right now. Katsidis is demonstrating as he lets his hands go and gets the knockdown. Amansat looking at his corner, but his job is clear. Stay on his feet and keep fighting. No one punch, just overwhelming with just with so much determination and strength. And Katsidis runs back and lands another right hand shot. This is the birth of a special fighter here in Michael Katsidis that you're watching. Unbelievable timing. And Gatti, Arturo Gatti retired a week ago. And now here he comes again in the 135-pound weight class. This is exactly the way Gatti looked the night that he knocked out Wilson Rodriguez okay? in Madison and Square Garden when the legend really was launched. And you know, Jay Nady is doing a great job tonight because he's, he's given both guys an opportunity where he could have stopped the fight both, both, both in either direction at one point, but he's not. And it's difficult because one guy's cut up so bad and still the other guy is one is in trouble. And Katsidis is punched out right now and somehow mustering the strength to continue to move his hands. 80 telling Amansat he cannot hold. Amansat starting to get his legs back a little bit and actually fires a straight left hand. Katsidis trying to get activity in his arms because as Max pointed out, he's punched out and still lands a huge right hand shot up the middle. When Rocky Marciano fought Ezard Charles in their rematch, Charles had Marciano's nose literally hanging off his face going into the eighth round. The referee gave Marciano one round to continue. One more round, and Marciano knocked Charles out in the eighth round. The way Katsidis came out of his corner in this round is reminiscent of that kind of circumstance. Stop! Stop. The good news for Katsidis is, and believe it or not, his eyes look better right now than they did two rounds ago. Yes! This is a tremendous fight. Not just the punches thrown, but there's so much power in each one of the punches. Unbelievable damage to both fighters. Okay, are you okay? All right. Where are you? Where is his eye? Watch his eye. Ha! Come on! Come on, come on, sit down. So relax. relax. Two rounds. Relax, relax. Who's got the water bottle? Thanks. Okay, you ready for a sip? Suck that. Don't worry about water. Listen, mate. Yeah? You're a mile in front, and you're doing a good job. Here you see Casitas coming in with just a barrage of punches. No one punch. He just started trying to force a knockout. Even though the opportunity wasn't there for a clean punch, and he just threw it all out. And a lesser guy would have given in under the situation. Uh, maybe a referee may have stopped the fight in a different situation. Second knockdown of the fight for Katsidis. Second time Amansat has gone to the canvas. CompuBox numbers in round 10, Katsidis landed 40 out of 79 punches. Every one of them was a power shot. He continues to land half his punches in the fight. Amansat, 19 out of 45. Harold Letterman's scorecard now shows a very comfortable working margin for Katsidis, who got another two-point round. But can he finish the fight? Well, he will if Amasad just sits back and watches, and he's realizing that he should realize that he's behind on points. 
two knockdowns scored against him, and you have a guy whose eyes totally messed up. He should be stepping it up a little bit and going all out to try to go for the knockout. And who's exhausted, by the way. Katsidis at the end of the round was mugging in front of Amensat because he needed to buy himself some time. He was punched out and exhausted. He's still buying time. And, yeah. and you wonder if he is uh, doing what he's doing right now, which is putting it in the deep freeze to a certain degree because he realizes he's ahead on the scorecards and simply wants to avoid damage at this point or because he's totally punched out after all of the action in the last round. Probably both, but the most important thing is Amasat is working and going right along with him. He, he's, he's working perfectly into the plans of Casita just taking his time, letting him rest, and, and the clock is ticking. And each ticking moment is getting closer and closer for Ricky for Casitas. Yes, it's too late for Amonsat to box. It's too late to yes. start relying again on the jab, which could have won him rounds early in the fight. This is the time for Amonsat to reverse the momentum and jump all over Katsidis and try to finish him off. And now Amonsat with a good straight left hand up the middle, and the bleeding begins again on the left eye of Katsidis. That, that eye is a... Whatever's uh, left of it. Whatever's left of it is a constant knockout threat, really. It's, it's, yeah. turned, it's turned Amonsat into a one-punch knockout threat because this fight could be stopped at any moment if yeah. that eye gets any worse. And I saw some places where the uh, doctor or the commission would stop the fight, still, regardless of oh, yeah, Exactly. I mean, you wonder yeah. when you... Max makes a good point when he says if the eye gets any worse, how it could is. it get worse? It is getting worse. It can start gushing it's, it's, as, it's, it's, as opposed yeah. to spilling. Katsidis threw one punch in the first two minutes of the round, but he bought two minutes, and that was the key. You know, in the neighborhood where I was raised at, we had a joke that said it looked like Katsidis had been in an axe fight and everybody had an axe but him. <laughs> and it does look that way. Everyone else has an axe, he has the end. If the doctor and the referee will allow Michael Katsidis to fight one more round, he is poised to pull off one of the most dramatic victories you could possibly oh, make. in history. Suck him up. We on the last. Breathe them in nice and deep. Last round, Redwood. Feeling? Got it in ya? Hey? You've done a good job, mate. You've done a good job. Nothing silly in your home, I know, okay? But there's a safety this is zone the last there. Round, really. You're a safety rear. Hill, he's gonna come out fire and expect the biggest rush you've had for a long time, okay? Alright, I want everything nice and tidy. And don't blow yourself in the first half of the round for me, okay? This fight's not over until the bell, all right? Well, Emmanuel, you talked about the veteran cut man, Jimmy Strickland, and it'll be fascinating sometime down the road to talk to Jimmy and see where he places this in his book of memories as a cut man. Punches in round 11, Katsidis 421, Amonsat 16 out of 53. Katsidis comfortably ahead on Harold Letterman's scorecard. Already has scored two knockdowns of Amonsat in the fight. Max, the leader in the clubhouse for fight of the year at this moment, was probably Miguel Cotto against Zab Judah in Madison Square Garden. And that fight had mayhem, but nothing to compare to this. This is better back and forth action. A lot of the um, the, the visible damage in the jo Judah Cotto fight was from elbows and headbutts, accidental or otherwise. This is from two way punching, both guys. Katsidis is still effectively buying time, and Amonsat is not jumping on him when he should be. No, Amonsat, Amonsat is cooperating 100%. And now Katsidis rushes forward as if he's going to throw a punch, and Amonsat backs off a little bit. And again, Katsidis buys time. And maybe Two I'm, minutes to go. Amonsat may have still a little fear and respect of the punching power of Katsidis himself, but maybe he is not too anxious to get in there neither. High drama in Las Vegas as Michael Katsidis seemingly thoroughly blinded by damage done to both eyes from the punches of Sar Amansat tries to work his way through what would be an extremely dramatic victory. It's interesting that um, Katsidis is clearly a special fighter. The question as to quite how special 
may have been answered had there been a little bit more of a sense in the last couple rounds that the fight would indeed be stopped on a cut. Because when that question came up in the, I think, the eighth or ninth round, Katsidis came out like a house on fire. And when that question didn't come up again, he didn't quite press the action the same way. And I wonder, had it come up again, could he have scored the knockout? Well, I suspect I can't, we'll I find out in his career him. at some point. Yeah, absolutely. As his career goes on, we're going to learn more and more. And and I can't blame Katsidis for anything that he's done. You know, there, there's some booing from the crowd, and I'm not sure what Tough it is crowd. they're booing. <laughs> there he goes again. And he's closing the show. Stop! Less than a minute to go. Katsidis seemingly aware of that. Now seems to feel secure in the notion that the doctor and the referee are going to let him finish the fight, and maybe he'll take one more run at knocking Amonsat out. You know, it's interesting. When you meet these two guys at an after party after here, and you look at their faces, and one guy say that he won, and another guy say he lost. You say you must be kidding. Yeah, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> say you're the winner. The one with the other guy's it? blood all through his hair? <laughs> yeah. And That's the loser? Yeah, don't ever scratch on his face, the, the loser. Katsidis looks the part. He looks the way boxing fans like their prize fighters to look at the end of a grueling fight. And he throws punches down the stretch and makes it to the finish line. And the two fighters embrace each other in the wake of a vicious, brutal brawl in the 135-pound weight class. Our first look at Michael Katsidis, and you hope you're going to see him again. Not looking that way. I doubt that's the last time we'll see him looking something like that. Now let's take a look at the three judges who will render a decision between Katsidis and Amansat. Dr. Ruben Garcia of Texas, 38 title fights. Ed Klitschko ahead of uh, Chris Bird in the ninth round. Or, or uh, check that. That's the shoulder fight. That was the Vitali Klitschko fight that took place in Berlin, Germany a few years back. Patricia Jarman, 64 title fight. She's a veteran and one of the five Nevada judges who preferred Jermaine Taylor over Bernard Hopkins in Hopkins' two fights against Taylor here. And C.J. Ross, the least experienced of the three judges, uh, in a similarly brutal fight between Jorge Arce and Skinny Hussein, had Arce ahead of Hussein, 88-82, which was pretty much the right score. Doctors have grouped in the ring looking at Casitas and discussing what happened here, and I don't know if I've ever seen doctor, doctors dissecting something like this in exactly the same way before. There's a look at Harold Letterman's scorecard, which had Michael Casitas winning 115-111. Michael Buffer's ready. Let's see who won the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Mandalay Bay, we go to the scorecards. Ruben Garcia scores about 116-110. Patricia, Morris Jarman, 114, 112. CJ Ross, 115, 111. All to the winner by unanimous decision. Still undefeated, the fighting bride of Queensland, Australia. Katsidis the Great. His family originates from the town in Greece, Larissa, which gave us Achilles. And you wonder down the road if Katsidis's eyes and face are going to show up as something like an Achilles heel. They could have here tonight, but he held on to win. There, there are going to be a couple of Hectors in his future, too, I have a feeling. <laughs> Final copy box numbers, Katsidis landing 259 of 558, slumping to 46% down the stretch after landing more than half his punches for most of the fight. Amon Sat 221 out of 710 in a skilled, controlled, good effort. Just not exactly from moment to moment, exactly the right fight to fight to beat Michael Katsidis. Power punches and jabs were relatively meaningless except for those times when Amon Sat was winning rounds with the jabs in the middle part of the fight. Katsidis 255 out of 530 power shots. 530 power shots in 12 rounds. And Amonsat, 155 out of 396. Michael Katsidis' right hand is going to make an imprint on the lightweight division. Whether it'll be good enough to make him the best lightweight in the world remains to be seen. So, 
That was all heat. Las Vegas doesn't cool off at night. Still to come. 